It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Chicago Bears. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors. And off we go here at Soldier Field. Taken at the goal line. Well, now how about this return? And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. They begin the drive with Williams. Breaks a tackle, now an alley. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. That good for 22 and a first down. Opening quarter, his opening carry of the game, and I think they'll give it to him a few more times, as they should. You're exactly right about that. With that type of a run, you want to repeat it many times until they show signs of stopping it. I think he did his visualization exercise before this one, and they're paying off. Down to the 42, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. Back to throw. McCarthy. This one swung out to Williams. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. That was a corner blitz, and it was Kyler Gordon getting in there for the sack. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. Now Herbert to start the drive. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Second down, they go back to Herbert. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here's third and three. Looking to throw. Williams. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. 
Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 46. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. They will come up on a first and five following the encroachment penalty. Herbert powering up the middle. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Mike Purcell with the tackle. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Ball on the 39. Here's the second and four. Operating from the gun, Williams. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. I don't think either one of us is surprised about who they just targeted on that one. I mean, they're going to try and get to him as much as possible. Off to a nice start, but unable to haul that one in. Yeah, already looked his way a couple of times on this opening drive. Can't connect there. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw. Williams. They'll set up the screen for Herbert. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. He's got a man complete, and this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So obviously, they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7 0 in favor of the Bears. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by DJ Moore. To the touchdown. Here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. And this take it in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. A last series for him. A little disappointing. Forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive. First and 10. Throwing on first down. McCarthy. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he'll be stopped right there at the 31. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Right back to Judy, and it's complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. That connection seemed to work out okay on the first play of the drive. Why not go right back to it? And once again, this defense is left without an answer as they surrender back-to-back -back first downs. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw. 
McCarthy, that one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. Second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. This will be caught. Judy. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 35. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. Ooh, with a juke. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. Back to throw. McCarthy. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction. Make sure you've got your best people in the area to try and take that away. On third down, McCarthy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Yeah, the Broncos are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Williams will try again. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let and this time he is in. Yes. Javante Williams taking it in from a yard out. And the Broncos are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Lutz good on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. 
And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Williams throwing to start the drive. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. So much of his game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. Now a second and 10. He's going to try and do this himself. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. A throw left side taken in by Komet. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down. And they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. And Denver getting set to take the field. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. 58 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. These two teams all tied after one. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two as they've got it second and seven. Looking to throw. McCarthy, a quick throw there is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Back to throw. McCarthy. And that is incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Solid coverage by the Bears' D. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. 
He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Now Williams throwing on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw. Williams. He finds his man complete. It's Harrison. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Well, that's what he can do when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And, in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Two straight runs of five yards, first and 10. I know flashy plays, flashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Williams to the right side, and he's got more complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far in this drive. This offense on the march. Williams now off the bootleg. Over the middle complete. That's Lewis. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Back to throw. Williams got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. A five-yard touchdown, and the Bears have taken the lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Santos with the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to so that drives seven plays in length, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. 
Javante Williams and the rest of the Bronco offense back out onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat, make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points on? Here's a throw out line complete to his running back right side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. It was T.J. Edwards who brought him down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. To throw on third down. McCarthy. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. They go play action here on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. On second down, Williams. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll go jet sweep here with Sutton. Oh, what a move. And a great job there to read that one defensively. They strung him out, would not allow him to cut up field. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. That one goes for eight yards. I haven't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder. If he wasn't a first-round pick, they want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Up the middle, it's Williams. Brought down at the 20. Second 
second and seven from the 20. Again, it's Williams. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. On third down, here's Williams. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. Fourth down now after a loss of two. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Now Lutz for the field goal try. This will be a 37-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So five yards here, five on the play, and that will bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here's a second and five. Now he'll try to run with this. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half, and on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Harrison. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. And officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Here's Williams on first down. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Here's second and ten. 
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I was not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Back to throw again. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 28. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. They'll look to throw again. They'll set up the screen to Herbert. The first down screen pass, good for five. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screen play is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short gain. Second and five. Operating from the gun, Williams. And this will be caught by Mooney. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Williams. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The way he's been slinging it in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to, have to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. To throw again, Williams. Touchdown, Bears! Jarnell Mooney in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bears will extend their lead here just before halftime. That is a near-perfect end-of-half drive right there. And we've seen that many times from the best in the league. But do you really expect to see it done that well by a rookie? And how about the timing? Finishing it almost near the zeros, as you said, right at the end of the half. Great momentum to carry into the locker room. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that makes it a 21-10 game. Four seconds, all that remain here this first half as the kick gets away. And he returns this to the 22. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, this Coach, has certainly been a fun much. one to watch As so we far. Welcome you we knew this was going to be a battle, but we have three. not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way.
set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner, yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. And yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Getting out a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. Back to throw. Williams over the middle, and that's caught by Komet. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Williams on first and 10. And again, back to Komet. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. And they'll come up second and seven. Operating from the gun, Williams. Oh, a first mistake for him in the ball game as it's intercepted. And the Broncos are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind. And we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And that's incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air and the spot will be inside the 35. The Bears offense ready to get going again. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive, in particular if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. 
Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Back to throw, Williams. Looks for the out route, and it's complete to Komet. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. Well, that's always a good place to throw it, just because he's one of the biggest targets, not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. And they run the option here on first and 10. Taking it right down Broadway. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Let's go, man. Second down and six now. Moore, the man in motion. Another carry for Herbert on second down. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Now Williams. From the gun on third down. That's complete right side to Komet. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Off play action. Williams. And it's caught. D.J. Moore, his second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. The partner, he has carried them in this ballgame, throwing the football, all four touchdowns through the air, and that's really helped them get this nice lead. And I know it's a team game, but right now, he is truly the focal point. Every touchdown his team has so far has been the result of his arm. How about him throwing it downfield, creating big plays? I don't know how you slow him down unless you can make him uncomfortable in the pocket. Santos with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now.
Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. On first down, McCarthy. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down and eight. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Williams. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. 80 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. They've been running it well all game, and why not? The big guys up front, they're just having a ball, creating monster holes for their guys to run through. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. McCarthy work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Broncos first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And the ball is knocked out. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defense is talking about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Looking to throw on second down, McCarthy. Four catches now on this drive alone. They can't stop him. It's another first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. On first and ten, McCarthy. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. Denver has the first down, the play going for 15 yards. I know that rookie quarterbacks have to earn veteran receivers trust. Maybe we saw that on that play with that type of effort, huh? Yeah, helping out the rook with a heck of a catch. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. Operating from the gun. McCarthy quickly into the hands of Mims. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 19. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Back to throw. McCarthy. And not able to get it that time. He hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. And glad you're with us from Soldier Field in Chicago. Third quarter here, second and 10. Now Williams running left. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, They've got to pay it off with some points. 
So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Lutz is good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. Let's go, fellas. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. There's D.J. Moore as he and the rest of the offense head back out there. He's been his typical solid and reliable self, hasn't he, Charles? When you have that go-to receiver that you can count on in the situation where you absolutely have to have him, it, there's nothing better for anybody who's throwing the football. But the best part is the payoff. Two touchdowns already. That's the bottom line when you throw the ball to a guy. Absolutely. Not over 100 yards right now, but he does have the two touchdown catches. Williams now throwing to start the drive. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in the game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes the quarterback look a whole lot better. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's the option. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Looking to throw. Williams. Dropping this underneath with Herbert. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Here's Williams from the gun on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question.
Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. Throwing to start the drive. McCarthy. That's going to be caught by Judy. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the 23, this is second and three. Operating from the gun, McCarthy. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Seven yards there and a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw, McCarthy. That's to the sideline and incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you that they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. 
The Bears on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. A handoff for Herbert. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage. Back at the 17. That'll back them up two yards and also bring up fourth. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On is Santos for the Bears field goal. From the left hash, this from 34. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. We'll see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. And now a big play to start off this drive as the shot downfield is complete. A huge play there for Denver, 48 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Back to throw. McCarthy, they'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Is this a hold, or did they rough the quarterback? After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. They try the left side here with Williams. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Throw to the right, caught by Dulcich. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And he's got it. And the Broncos are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep it from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. They'll motion out one of the tight ends. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. Williams. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. To throw on second down, McCarthy. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Adam Troutman 
there to make the grab. And the Broncos have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Lutz with the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Onto the field now come the Bears. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but... Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Watch out now, 50 Fury. A quick throw out wide to Mooney. It'll be a gain of five. And that'll bring up second down. Back to throw. Williams. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Now motion left with Mooney. Here's a give to Herbert. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Williams throw there, complete to Mooney. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll run with Herbert. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. 43 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. They're looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Read option, here's Herbert. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line, and I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. 
Second down, they go back to Herbert. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos 23. It'll be a five-yard pick up there, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Herbert now on the option, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. On is Santos for the Bears field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though... They were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Off the play fake, McCarthy. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. As he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. We've seen the pressure get to him several times in this game. There, though, we see him escape it. And we've seen this rookie video before as well. That type of pressure, oftentimes, what do you resort to? Your legs, try and escape. What you hope is that this doesn't become habit for him, that he learns how to handle the pressure, still keep his eyes downfield, and make some throws. Open man downfield is Judy. He's got it. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go.
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Operating from the gun, McCarthy. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Just nowhere to go with the football. He was forced to put that one into Lake Michigan. I think his receivers have to do a better job of working free because he didn't have anywhere to go at all on that play. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Again, he'll drop to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Broncos' decision to go for it pays off with six points. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. So that last kickoff, just a mere formality, obviously, Charles, wrapping up a game that they should be very happy about in which they got the win. Yeah, I thought they were clearly the better team by the end, and they earned this one with a terrific game plan and consistent effort throughout. Only fitting that they had the ball when the clock hit zero. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say